Welcome back to another edition of the Sal Greco Show. This edition is slightly different because we're on the road. We're here in Tampa, and I'm in Tampa for what? The aftermath of Hurricane Milton. I was giving a helping hand to the community here, just like I was the week prior when I was in Asheville, North Carolina, giving a helping hand to the residents of Asheville after Hurricane Helene hit. It's unbelievable how two hurricanes hit in the matter of seven, ten days, maybe. So Tampa was a little better suited to handle the hurricane, only because in Florida, it's almost, it's, it's basically well known that during hurricane season, there's going to be hurricanes galore going on. So they were better suited to handle this, but still there was areas that were affected there were trees that were down. There was debris all over the place. There's uh, electric that's still out. Um, there's gas shortages. Some people, unfortunately, lost their homes and others lost their lives. And it's very unfortunate. Uh, I've, I've been out here since right as the hurricane hit. And then after the hurricane left, uh, I've been doing all I can to help. I mean, over the weekend, uh, there were uh, showers available at uh, one of the uh, local Walmart's in the area, and uh, we're just helping the residents try to get back on their feet. And I think Tampa, Sarasota, and other areas that were affected by hurricane, they'll, they'll recover a lot quicker, per se, than Asheville. And Asheville is still devastated, and uh, my heart still goes out to those residents. I was there, and it was uh, very, very, um, you know, just gut-wrenching to see what happened there. So I, I still pray for the folks in Asheville also in Tampa, and I, I hope the rest of the country um, keeps them in their prayers. And if you could pro provide anything, any supplies, anything you can, uh, go ahead and see. Um, there's plenty of uh, organizations and GoFundMes and um, a lot of services for the people out here that need it because uh, whatever you can send, whatever you can do, uh, don't hesitate. And uh, with that being said, though, wow. <laughs> What the hell is going on in New York City? A week ago, I was discussing resignations that, that occurred. Finally, Philip Banks, an unindicted co-conspirator, he resigned from being the deputy mayor of public safety. Uh, his, his brother was the school chancellor. He resigned a lot sooner than we thought. And I basically agree with the general consensus of others that Eric Adams, I mean, how many more weeks can he remain mayor? Two, three? I mean, his entire administration is v virtually gone, and there's still corruption that's being uncovered that we didn't know about, or you may have had inklings about. One place in particular where I keep harping about why, because it is the hub for this crew. Whether you want to call it the Eric Adams crime family, you want to call it the, I don't know, the crime syndicate of New York City. But the name of the place, as you well know, is the now shuttered nightclub and restaurant that was in the industrial section of the Bronx, Con Sofrito, where allegations of human trafficking, allegations of narcotic sales, allegation of discounted meals. There's... All kinds of mishigash with the police department and politicians. And, well, <laughs> there was an article written over the weekend. And uh, I just, before I comment on this, I'd like you to see what my two pals, John McCarry and Eric Dim, had to say about this. So uh, let's roll this footage from the Finest Unfiltered podcast where John McCarry and Eric Dim gave their take on it. But uh, NYPD chiefs accused of stealing funds to restaurant of ex-commissioner's brother, whistleblower. Uh, before we get this out, um, we have filed a complaint on the NYPD, uh, upper echelon of the NYPD, along with the NYPD Internal Affairs Bureau, along with the mayor of the city of New York, along with numerous other elected officials. Um, and uh, some of what we alleged was that they were also criminally associating with a mob associate who they sent to threaten me. Uh, came out online, said he was going to see me, did all these things. And I'm like, where'd this guy come from? Why did he get my name? And why is he threatening me online? And that was the business partner of the ex-police commissioner's brother and who 
at this restaurant that he uh, they talked about. So this complaint from DOI is not us. Uh, we never accused any chiefs of steering funds to the restaurant. Uh, we didn't, or we did say that the NYPD held functions there and criminally associated with. We were talking about the upper echelon, and that they failed to do the required checks on the restaurant, which everyone would know when you hold a police event, you're required to get an IAB log number, you're required to call Internal Affairs Bureau, and you're required to get an, a check at of the business. Uh, from Intel. Apparently, this was not done. A couple of these flyers had the Internal Affairs Bureau logo on it, not a podcast, not a log number, which is required, um, which is concerning. And it's truly concerning because there was a lot of open violations concerning this restaurant uh, that were unaddressed. And um, so, you know, we made some allegation, but it wasn't this allegation. Uh, the Sal Greco also filed a DOI complaint and I forget what his complaint was but it also was not this it also was not that chiefs were accused of steering funds to a restaurant of an ex-police commissioner's brother so we're going to get into the article but I just want to clear the air before all of you think it's either us or Sal it wasn't it absolutely was not um but it's it's valid and it's concerning and we also did say that it should be a conflict of interest that any members of the NYPD are doing business with the police commissioner's brother, right? Concerning. And uh, and just to, uh, another point of clarification, this brother is not the brother that's being accused of the shakedown racketeering uh, operation of nightlife businesses. So, Eric, what do you think when you're, when you're reading this, like before we get into the article? Like, what did you think when you first saw this? I, yeah, I thought the same thing. Like, oh, here we go, you know. Right away, people are going to assume that Sal Greco or myself or you uh, had our finger on this. Absolutely not. It just shows right now there's so many facets going on right now with this administration, especially the upper echelon. There's so many probes and so many allegations of corruption and so many different appearances of impropriety. But I will say this. Sal Greco was right. The Consa uh definitely plays a part. When it comes to level of corruption, we even had Jimmy Rodriguez, who is really the the, the de facto owner and manager of Conta Fritos, who was a known criminal himself, contact John John McCary uh, online and uh, try to intimidate and cause some threats, which of course uh, we didn't take too too lightly. But uh, at the same token, this is very concerning. I myself, uh, you know, I actually put a post out to Victoria Perry because. Victoria Perry, I, you know, I said you shouldn't throw stones when you live in a glass house. Of course, is referring to this podcast as racist while she's getting her fingers sticky herself, possibly, uh, potentially. It looks as though that this uh, has some teeth to it. So what do we all know about this? I threw a 1013 function for one of my police officers back in 2016. And uh, one of my police officers, uh, actually, I was a lieutenant this time, but when I was a sergeant, one of my crime guys, uh, he had, was suffering from leukemia. So myself and two other police officers, we got together. We threw a 1013. And the hoops that we had to jump through, it was unbelievable. We had to get log numbers from the Intelligence Bureau, log numbers from Internal Affairs. We had to send all the documentation. There had to be a warrant check, warrant check on the representative of the bar restaurant that we held the function. We had to show where all the money was uh, was coming from, all the funds. We had to show who was the recipient. How did the recipient get this, get these funds? And there was just so many hoops to get this 1013 function authorized and so many hoops to jump through to show that everything was valid and everything was on the up and up. And then here we go. And, uh, and that's why I said also to Victoria Perry on Twitter, did you have to jump through the same hoops that I did? Because apparently not. And here, here's another appearance of impropriety. Again, rules for thee and rules not for me. Yeah, so, all right, let's get into it. A whistleblower is accusing the police brass of steering funds to a Bronx, Bronx restaurant owned by the brother of former police commissioner Edward Caban, according to a complaint filed with the city department of investigation. So, again, they shouldn't, the, no one in the city should have been doing business with the city of New York because you're not allowed to do your family, your family's not allowed to do business with the city of New York if you're a high ranking official in New York City. And honestly, it's technically not allowed even if you're a cop, even if you're a nobody cop who can't do anything. 
never mind the police commissioner. So Deputy Chiefs Maximo Tolentino and Victoria Perry directed the funds to be used for community parties at Con Sofrito, which is owned by Richard Caban, a retired NYPD lieutenant, the complaint states. The bosses, who were both in community affairs, allegedly told the cops under their command to focus on doing events at Con Sofrito and use all resources available to make the big boss happy, the complaint states, referring to then Commissioner Caban. 5% for the big guy. That is Victoria Perry, who our organization Noble had uh, also attacked this podcast and tried to make inflammatory claims that we were racist about memes uh, that were satirical memes that were based upon the racist statements of Eric Adams and some deputy commissioners in the NYPD, one notably... Um, what was her name? We just talked about her, Tanya Meisenholder, who called us knuckle draggers. So, yeah, so we did some satirical memes, but we were racist. They weren't. Um, so here's a picture of. So on, on your right, you have Richard Caban, who's the owner of the restaurant. In the middle, you have James Caban, who is the man who's being accused of running an extortion racketeering ring, shaking down businesses, using his police escort and the authority from his to the left of him. In the middle, the brother Edward Caban, uh, the mob associate who decided to threaten me um, with, with a post where he had Fat Joe tagged and all these other people commenting on it. Uh, he's not pictured here. Um, so the allegations in the DOI complaint were also made to federal investigators, a police source said. The events at the Commerce Avenue eatery took place between 22, October of 22 and January of 23. The parties cost between 5000 and 8000 the source said. Among the Community Affair Bureau events, there was a Winter Wonderland where officers distributed toys to the children to the complaint and social media posts. They misused and ordered the misuse of city resources, the police source said, adding that Perry was recently promoted to chief and was receiving, received a pay bump. So here's the flyer here from the Community Affairs Bureau. If you look to the right right here, you'll see that there, that is the logo for the NYPD Internal Affairs Bureau, as well as Rafael Sal Salamanca Jr., who's the land chair for city council. He's in charge of the, the committee for land use. Um, and again, this, this, um, establishment was not paying their rent to the owner of the establishment. They had numerous fire and building code violations that they did not, um, they did not, um, take care of uh i don't i forget what the word that they use uh they did not alleviate it um they did not cure so they allowed those things to sit um they probably should have been shut down and they were allowed to operate so salamanca the land share should have known that the iob's internal affairs bureau should have known that as well as there were numerous complaints made about the 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 establishment as well i believe some of them involving sex trafficking that were made to the internal uh i'm sorry that were made to the nypd's vice division that were forwarded so there are numerous issues with this place numerous reasons including the fact that this could should be looked at as a conflict of interest when it you're looking at um city charter rules when it relates to doing business with the city so numerous issues surrounding this place and nobody cared because nobody checked in. and what you see missing from here is an IAB log number which is required for the flyer um so perry made about two hundred fourteen thousand dollars in 2023 that is a lot less than kaz daughtry made right it was over three hundred thousand dollars salary and talentino as a deputy chief made two hundred thirty three thousand still a lot less than kaz daughtry rumors circulated prior that perry's electronics were seized by investigators but the nypd's public information office denied that it did not immediately respond when asked about the doi complaint the doi didn't immediately respond to post in inquiries nor did perry and talentino caban's brother twin brother james caban is being eyed by the feds for his alleged work as a fixer for swanky restaurants and nightclubs in manhattan where he allegedly helped smooth things over between businesses and cops giving them trouble there are five investigations into mayor eric adams in their circle uh well so this substantiates our complaint so initially uh john and i made a complaint to the eternal affairs bureau uh about 
the upper echelon of the police department about khaki pants unit about us being attacked by a fake moniker threaten the lives of us and our children which uh some real uh disturbing pictures of uh people with zip uh you know picture of zip ties and a map to florida indicating that they're coming to kill myself and john which is fine but then they threatened our families but what we were initially told by the the uh internal affairs bureau is that uh the Internal Affairs Bureau did not participate at any at any uh, events at Consafritos, which is a complete lie because that was our first question. Uh, first question of the investigations: We wanted to make sure that there was uh, the Internal Affairs Bureau was not compromised and that this would be a proper investigation, which we suspect it would not be. But we were told specifically in an email, which we read at a prior podcast, that no one from the internal from the Internal Affairs Bureau has participated at an event at Consafritos. Uh, Because kinds of freezos did come up in our complaint as well with the uh, threats to John McCary from uh, Jimmy Rodriguez while they're consorting with the upper echelon of the police department, notably Ed Caban, the former police commissioner himself. So sure enough, Internal Affairs Bureau, their logo is on this flyer. There was a picture that surfaced with cheap places at Consafritos, just a complete lie. Internal Affairs Bureau cannot investigate themselves. You know, again, you know, it's not surprising that Victoria Perry or maybe uh, Maximo himself has to have funds going to Contrafritos to supplement their, their, their pockets when Kaz Daughtry is making significantly about 100000 maybe more than their than, than their counterparts. So Victoria Perry is making about 100000 less than a detective that was elevated by rocket fuel to deputy commissioner operations. So maybe that's why they're, they're, they're looking for funding and private contracts out there. Yeah. And, uh, Frank also, Frank Cesario brings up a great point about Pat Lynch also had a retirement party there as well. So all the unions were involved too. And actually I believe that happened after we were threatened, like all of that stuff happened after we were threatened and we made uh, allegations about the place, uh, which is insane. Uh, insane to think. Uh, Sal says people should, instead of worrying about whether myself, John, or Eric made the complaint, worry about the actual criminality that occurred in the place. This seems to be the Ravenite of this crime family. Yeah, by all means, it looks like Eric Adams is running a crime syndicate in New York City, and this is just more dirtbag allegations that are coming out. It's like, oh yeah, you know, you have to have your party here. Uh, we're not, you know, no enforcement's being done. And I think the one part in this article that the Post missed is that it wasn't that they were just selling protection from the NYPD. The allegation is that they're selling protection from the New York State Liquor Authority, the Department of Buildings, and the Fire Department as well, which would mean that this is brought up in a widespread corruption allegation that involves both state and city widespread web of corruption uh, gloom, looming over New York. Um, I think that's something that keeps getting missed. Uh, the media keeps not honing in on that po- portion of it, is that like there were all of these other agencies involved in this actual racket. And, and what stemmed from that protection racket, we got to remember how that happened. New York City mayor ended the March program, which NYPD used to do with numerous other agencies, Department of Building, Fire Department. It's called the multi-agency response, uh, uh, multi-agency response team we would do. We would go out, and that was done at a precinct level. SOL would determine, based upon the number of complaints, uh, based upon community complaints, if a if a inspection was warranted in an establishment, and then we'd call up you know, these other agencies get involved and conduct an operation there to make sure that the place was up to snuff. They were operating within code. They weren't selling bad food, bad alcohol, you know, the fire code, they were following fire code, building code, all of these other agencies would be there. And Eric Adams said that was bad. He said that was bad. He said we were harming businesses. He said that we were shuttering businesses. And instead, he wanted to cure businesses. He wanted to go out and warn businesses and cure them. So he shut down the March program which we raised eyebrows about when he did. We said, that's very strange to do. It's a very weird thing. It it looks to be corruption prone by doing this. And what he did is he put in place what's called the cure program. And the cure program was supposed to help businesses come up to snuff in order to not shutter businesses, which is in direct conflict 
with what the sheriff is doing when it's related to those individuals who are accused of selling illegal marijuana in a city that marijuana is legal. Um, so it's in direct conflict to that. And the cure program falls out on this office that Eric Adams created the office of the nightlife and the office of the nightlife was put in place so that if you're having a problem, you reach out to this office and they'll help you to cure the problems you're having with the NYPD. So one Brooklyn uh, club owner in Coney Island reached out to the office of the nightlife. He spoke with a gentleman named Ray Martin. Ray Martin has since been fired from the office of the nightlife by new york city mayor eric adams after it came out that when this bar owner uh shamel's his first name i forget his last name but shamel reaches out to ray martin in an official capacity to the office of the nightlife he says I, i'm having problems like the nypd keeps summonsing me i want to see what i could do to to correct this you know what i could do to operate legally and keep the police uh enforcement away from my business like what could i do i just want to operate my business and feed my family Shamel Kelly is his name. And so he reaches out to Ray Martin and Ray Martin says, there's nothing I can do to help you. You have to reach out to this guy. And he gives James Caban's cell phone number. And James Caban says, yeah, I'll help you out. Just give me uh, 2,500 bucks. So the office of the nightlife appeared to be helping in this extortion racket. And that's what people have to put in, into play. It wasn't just the police commissioner. It wasn't just the NYPD. It was also the mayor's office. It was also people in the state. So that's what consistently gets missed here. Oh, absolutely right. A solid record says, the allegations I have understood is cops would go to Consa Frito to pay whoever it was to get their essay paid or detective promotion in the NYPD. This is one of the drop-off spots, allegedly. Now, I'll say this. I don't believe in coincidence. We have Consa Fritos uh, has been at the center of numerous potential allegations and the appearance of impropriety. We have numerous events being held there. We ha It's a known place where known criminals hang out. While Sal Greco was wrongfully terminated for his association with Roger Stone, while we have Eric Adams along with high prolific politicians of New York State, not just New York City, of New York State, that have attended Consafritos numerous times and uh, engaged in photos with uh, Jimmy Rodriguez, who's a known criminal himself, uh, has, has, a, uh, has a criminal history, which completely violates NYPD policy. It's just not appearance. Good. That's a good appearance for the public. We also have, while John and I were under attack, we have a detective from the 4-5 Precinct Detective Squad trying to find out why we're making a complaint, calling us rats, finding out what's going on with all cops and walls. Knew we made a complaint, right? Knew yes. almost immediately upon us filing the complaint. Knew we made the complaint. Absolutely. Right. Found out from internal affairs that we made a complaint. And where is Consa Fritos located? In the 4-5 precinct. So a detective that we've never met in our entire careers contacted John and myself and very concerned about all cops are woke. And yet this detective also claimed that all cops are woke was a young girl, a 16-year-old girl from Nebraska. So that's another problem. If that was true, why is a detective in the 4-5 precinct associating with a 16-year-old girl in Nebraska? So Constance has been at the forefront for appearance of impropriety. It doesn't look good. It's terrible. They violate NYPD policy. And again, I threw a 1013 function myself. I know the hoops that you have to jump through to have these authorized. So internal affairs is no longer capable to police themselves. How could internal affairs actually have an event there themselves where it, it shouldn't even be uh, it shouldn't even be authorized when we have numerous felons and criminals hanging around with high politicians? It's absolutely ridiculous. terrible look, terrible look. And uh, again. There's just so many different facets, and we see so many, so many different angles of potential corruption. Something's going to stick. There's absolutely some teeth here. It's absolutely ridiculous. 100%. So I agree with John McCarr and Eric Dim about a lot of what they said, but i like to add on a few factors. Number one, people that are actually thinking that John McCarr, Eric Dim, or myself were filing complaints in regards of Consa Frito, uh, I have a lawsuit. I don't need to file a complaint, okay? And I know that Eric Dim and John McCarry have not filed anything with the Department of Investigation. It's also irrelevant who filed a complaint. The relevant thing is that there's criminality that happened here, okay? And by the way, 
There's other allegations that have come out. You know what those allegations are? That there were cops from the New York City Police Department that were going to Cone Sofrito and dropping off booster bags, a.k.a. cash in an envelope, to gophers. I don't know exactly who the gophers are or what that meant, but then this would go to the higher authority, whoever these are, whether it's the former police commissioner or the chief of department or any one of Eric Adams' underlings or maybe Eric Adams himself, and you bought yourself a promotion. Special assignment pay would be a supervisor on the job. You go from special, you go from a sergeant to special assignment sergeant. You go from lieutenant to special assignment lieutenant. And, uh, this is something that is very important because it's pay for play. And also detectives, you go from third grade to second grade or second grade to first grade. And all you have to do is go to Con Sofrito, which was rumored to be one of the places where they would drop off these, uh, booster bags and, this is now starting to come to light because why? We know <laughs> there's a lot of unmarked cars showing up to one Hogan place, which is downtown Manhattan. Now that's the courthouse, but it's an exuberant amount. What's going on there? Could it be that detectives or people in units are going up there to sing like canaries? Is that why the Detective Endowments Association, the union of the detectives, said don't talk to feds? Is that mean, does that mean that now we are pledging omerta to criminals? I mean, really, you have to really decide here. Are you a cop or are you a gangster? Because you can't play both roles. You're either a public servant doing the right thing or you drop that gun and shield, and go be a gangster. Go hang out with the mob associate. Hey, that that's what a lot of cops and executives were doing. And I mean the cops that are the underlings to these executives. You can't blame the average Joe or Joe cop who has no idea what's going on and thinks, hey, what a great place to eat, which, by the way, Conso Frito was cited for having numerous violations, like having mice droppings in the food. So I hope uh, anyone that went there and ate God knows what you ate or, you know, if you got sick. But if you were feeling sick at that time, you got a better understanding of what was going on now. But with that being said, we have Victoria Perry, who's a deputy chief, and another deputy chief, uh, Talentino, from the NYPD that was steering business to Conso Frito. And here's the problem with that. It wasn't just a couple of months. They had been operating from 2020 to 2024. So there was a lot of business that they got steered over there. It wasn't just for a couple of months. The article is great, but it does leave things out like that. So there are numerous parties and also parties that were sponsored by internal affairs who were supposed to do those checks that, I don't know, did they ever do it? Doesn't seem that way, but to be continued with that, I agree this stinks. And also, I'm going to show you this video, which involves another crazy allegation. So this Deputy Chief Talentino, who is now under investigation, was transferred from Community Affairs to Criminal Justice Bureau, which is CJB. And you want to know why? Apparently, they sent bulletproof vests to the Dominican Republic, and there's no approval of, for this anywhere. Where is the approvals for this? Did the Corporation Council sign off on this? Did the Law Department sign off on this? And why are recruits going on plane rides to the Dominican Republic? Really, who authorized this? So I'm going to play this video, and uh, I'm going to keep it short on this edition only because I'm out here in Tampa. So with that being said, before I go, and I'll, I'll play the video, if you like what you saw, if you hear something you like on Rumble, hit the follow button, hit the Rumble button on YouTube, click the subscribe button, click the like button, hit that notification button so you can always be notified on the next episode that comes out of the Sal Greco Show. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Spotify, all the po uh, podcast streaming platforms, 
Give it a like and also start following the show there. Maybe leave a comment on uh, the reviews. But there's going to be some uh, upcoming improvements on this show. Uh, I'm very happy to show you all what's going on. I'm trying to uh, expose all of this. It's for you. The poor NYC taxpayer that is being bludgeoned by this administration, these really corrupt people. I mean, Eric Adams should really, I don't know what he's waiting on to step down. If he thinks he's going to defeat these charges, boy, he wait till you see what the Eastern District of New York has incoming. And uh, with that being said, like I said, like, share, and subscribe if you're on uh, YouTube, on Rumble. Follow button, hit the follow button, hit the Rumble button. On the podcast streaming platforms, hit the like button and also uh, uh, spread the message around. And uh, you will be seeing improvements soon. And here is that video that I promised. And uh, you decide what the hell was Tolentino, Deputy Chief Tolentino, and the NYPD thinking, sending bulletproof vests over the Dominican Republic. We don't know who paid for this. And by the way, this video was taken down from the NYPD Espanol uh, website or Instagram, wherever, wherever the video was posted on their social media. It's now gone, by the way. So uh, if there's nothing wrong, what do you have to hide? And with that being said, good morning, good afternoon, and good night. El 3 de junio, los oficiales le entregaron estos chalecos a la Policía Nacional Dominicana, donde los oficiales usualmente patrullan sin chalecos. Oficiales y reclutas dominicanos de la NYPD prepararon 500 chalecos antibalas para mandarlos a la República Dominicana.